277. Let's do one more. 277. I don't, 
I don't get to call shots. My age, my wife, it's his, you know. And uh, about, I don't know, it's been a month or maybe a little longer. I don't know exactly how long ago I was uh, just driving down the road. I think what I've done. And, uh, and I, uh, God just spoke gently, real gentle to me, and said, stay cool about this church. And I, I dismissed that completely. I've been going to stay cool and preach a little bit. And the first thing, Vicki, I'll tell you this is the truth. The first thing I said, and I stepped in the altar, into the, behind that pulpit, I said, I ain't looking for pastors no church. Don't even consider them, you know? And that's the first word out of my mouth. I walked in there, and I preached that time, and I went back three or four more times after that. And uh, then one day I'm, I'm just going down the road and God puts that on my heart and just speaks real gentle to me. And I, I just kind of dismissed it because I thought I had God figured out, you know. I thought, you know, celebrate recovery is all I'll ever do. It's all I planned on doing. And when God sent Patrick here, I was just, you know, that's just relief for me. And, I, and it was just what God wanted. And it was just the right thing at the right time. And so I just thought I had God figured out. And then this comes along, this happens. Then I kind of just ignored that voice and I just wasn't going to pay no attention to it because, you know, and, then, and it wasn't really, you know. And then one day I drive up to the store. Uh, we're closed that day. And uh, our staff Rick Davis, he's unloading some stuff out of the car. And I pull up, I just go over and unlock a door. I see him unload some stuff over there and he runs over and he grabs me and, I'm, and he says, he says you're just the man I want to see. And he said, he said, I know this. And he looked at me real sorry. He said, I know this. Tears in his eyes. He said, I know you're the man that's supposed to be able to stay cool. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, I said, I ain't. And I said, this, then, all that, and God speaking to me. And I said, well, let me pray about it. I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't really, hadn't really planned on ever pastor the church again. Didn't really want to. And uh, that's what I told him. And, uh, and so, uh, that went on that day. Uh, I went back last week, preached there, and uh, after about a month of praying about it, I told him that, you know, if the church wanted me, I'd come. And uh, then I went last Sunday, Sunday before last, I guess, and preached there. And they voted on me this Sunday, so I didn't say nothing this Sunday. I didn't know what they was going to do. Uh, but I told God in all of this, I said, if you don't shut the door, I'm going. It's up to you. You know, you do what you want to. You can shut the door. You can open it. I'm just, I'm just going to do what you want me to. And so the Sunday after I preached on the next Monday, I called Wesley Campbell. And I called him and I said, Wesley, you know, I've not talked to him since before he had his throat surgery. He's had that throat surgery. I hadn't talked to him before since then. When, I, when he preached here, I guess the last time I seen him and hadn't talked to him, and had to talk to him during his surgery or any time even after that. He's come here and preach, and I didn't go listen, you know. And uh, so I called him, and I said, well, let me tell you something. I just, I just called you, and I know, you know, I don't call you much, but I said, I got something I want you to pray, pray about. And uh, and uh, he said, I've been thinking all day about Steve Cole Church. I said, do you know where that is? He said, no. I said, that's what I was calling about. He said, I could have told you that before you ever you ever called me. So there's been all kinds of things that just makes me believe and know that I'm doing the right thing. I thought I had God figured out, but I don't. And, uh, and uh, if you want to read with me tonight, so I'll be going to Stick Oil Baptist Church to pastor there starting July the 26th. So next next week I'm going to be on vacation. And then next Sunday I'll be there. So this has been my last night here for a while. And I just want to leave this message with you. It just seems like the place where I always end up at. Uh, he's here. It's where, I, it's where I got saved, where God saved me at. I was in this building when God saved me. I was with you when God saved me. I've been with you off and on for my whole life, really, you know. And, you know, I mean, if I was in control, I wouldn't be doing this. I really wouldn't because I like this. is where I love to stay. I, I want to stay here, but, you know, if God... Uh, says to do something else, you ain't got a lot of choice in life. And God called a man to preach. I mean, he's just got to preach. That's right. I mean, ain't nothing he can do about it. Uh, most of the time, the most of the things I've done in my life wasn't really wasn't by my choice. It wasn't really by my choice. You know, God, God has just intervened in my life so many times and done things that <laughs> I wasn't even ready for. I wasn't even looking for it. Didn't think it ever happened, but it did. Uh, but here's the thing. 
And I want to leave with you tonight that God is in control. Amen. That God is in control. I've got that on my arm. I've been wearing that for a few weeks now. And it just says God is in control. God's in control of our lives. <laughs> And uh, we don't always get to do what we want to. Uh, what we want to do ain't what, what God wants us to do all the time. I don't understand that, but I ain't never going to figure God out. But here is two things in, chapter, in, in Psalms chapter 13 that I don't ever want you to lose. Or I don't ever want to lose myself. And there are two things you must never lose. And number one, both of them, number one is you must never lose your confidence. And number two is you must never lose your praise. Amen. There is never a reason in our life. There's never anything that will ever happen in our life that would, would be a reason for us to lose confidence in God. Amen. Not, not one thing that will ever happen in your life will cause you to lose confidence in God. And there is not anything that can ever happen in your life that should cause you to, to stop praising God. Nothing. No reason ever at all uh, for you to ever lose your confidence in God or stop praising God. Now David was a man... Who was, who was used to winning battles and used to, he was a warrior, a man of war, and he won, but he was a, he was a champion for God. He killed the giant. He was used to winning. But Psalm chapter 13, things have suddenly changed. I guess I'll have to change, I'll turn there myself. But things suddenly change. When things suddenly change, here's what I'm going to say. You don't lose your confidence and don't lose your praise. Just keep trusting God. Um, so in Psalm chapter 13, let's read it and see what happened to David. When things suddenly change, don't lose your confidence and don't lose your praise. Well, that's what I'm going to leave with you tonight. It's a simple message. But here's David, a man of war who's used to winning. And, and now in, in the, so things have suddenly changed. And it seems like in this chapter, if you read it, that God is ignoring him and that God has forgotten about him. And that God isn't paying any attention to him. And it seems like his enemies are are, are, are winning ever over him. And they're gonna and they're gonna win over him. But listen what it says. It says, How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? And to David here, it seems like he is thinking, God, why are you ignoring me? Why why don't you have you forgotten about me? Why do you, I mean, ain't you ever been there and think, ain't God, he must have forgotten about me. Oh, He's ignoring me. I, I'm, I'm telling him everything that I, and, and I'm not hearing back from God. But where are you at, God? Have you forgot about me? And this is how he feels. But I'm glad we don't live by feelings, but we live by faith. That first, line, that first song, living by faith. Amen. And it was, it was all the money, you know. Because that's how God wants us to live. And that's what God is looking for in our life. This is one of the most important times in David's life. When, when it seems like, in our life, when it seems like God is ignoring us and we can't hear from, we're not hearing from God, and He's not, He doesn't seem to be anywhere around as far as we can tell. But we know He is. But that's where David is at. He said, how long shall I take counsel in my soul having sorrow in my heart daily. How long am I going to just have to keep on worrying? David is worrying. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? How long is this going to continue on? That it seems like my enemy is exalted over me and I'm just, I'm just worrying. And he says, look, consider and hear me. He's saying, God, would you just look at me? I want you to pay attention to me. Look, consider and hear me. Oh, Lord, my God. Lighten, lighten mine eyes. Let me see a little bit of hope. Let me, I, I mean, it's, to him it's total darkness. He can't see God. He can't, I don't think he can even feel God. I, I think he thinks God has left him and, and somehow forgot about him. He's ignoring him. And he needs that light. He needs that assurance. He needs that, you know. He's just defeated right now. How long are my enemies are going to have? He's feeling defeated and left out. Like God is just nowhere near. Lest I sleep the sleep of death. God, if you don't, if you don't shine some light in my life, I'm not, I'm not going to make it. God, if you don't show up on the scene, I mean, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't, your light don't shine in on me, I ain't going to make it. I'm going to die. That's how he's feeling. Well, that's verse 5, verse 4, it says, 
Lest my enemy say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved, offended. The enemy is going to rejoice when, whenever David is pushed down and defeated in his life. But listen what he never lost. Five, verse 5, he never lost his confidence. In verse 6, he never lost his praise. And in all of this, look at what David says. When he feels like he, God has completely forgot about him, when he feels like there is, and he can't see any light, he's in the darkness. But here's what he knows about God. God David knows this. David knows in the very end, God is going to rescue him. And that's all I know I know this, that this much, that in the end, God is going to rescue me, McGarry. God is going to rescue me. That's all I know. I know in the end I'm going to win. Amen. David knew that. In the end, I'm going to win. In the end, I know God is going to rescue me. I might, my, 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 be in darkness. I might feel like God is ignoring me. I might feel like he has forgotten about me. But I am confident of this one thing, that in the end, God's going to rescue me. This is what he says. Verse 5, but I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice. He said, I'm going to rejoice in my salvation. I'm going to rejoice and I know he's going to rescue me. He's in darkness. He thinks God maybe has forgotten about him. He's worried. He's going through all this. But in his heart and in his spirit, he says, I know that God's going to rescue me. I can rejoice. I'm going to rejoice anyway. There isn't anything that ever happened in our life that will cause us to lose our confidence in God. God has done so much for me in the past, and I know that he's going to rescue me in the future. I just know that, and I, I stand here knowing that. And so I am confident that in the end I'm going to win. I am confident this is what David is saying. Listen to what verse 6 he says, I will sing unto the Lord. I'm just going to keep singing. I'm going to keep trusting God, and I'm going to keep singing about him. I'm going to keep singing. I know how I feel, but how I feel is not what I know. You see, if we know by our feelings, if he went along with his feelings right here, he'd just have laid down and quit, wouldn't he? But here he says, I am trusting in your mercy, and I am going to sing unto the Lord, no matter what's going on in my life right now. We look at what's going on in the world today with this COVID and all the right and all this crazy stuff. And you see people that's losing confidence in God. And you see people who stop praising God. Don't let anything ever cause you to lose your confidence in God. And don't ever let anybody... Don't, you know what the devil wants to ruin in our life? There's two things he wants to ruin. He wants to ruin our confidence. He wants to ruin our faith. And he wants to ruin our praise. He wants us to stop praising God. This is all the devil wants to do. He's always trying to ruin our faith. And he's always trying to take our praise and to stop our mouth. And, and but, but what's God doing in all of this? You know, uh, what's God up to in our life? I mean, we've been there a lot of times and we just ask, what, what's going on? We know this, and here's what David knows. He knows that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And that, that is something that we can, and I, want you to, I just want to encourage you to continue to be confident. And to keep on praising God. What's doing in your what's God doing in your life when He's doing you this way? When, when God it seems like God is ignored, what in the world is going on? What is God doing? Let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 9. And we can see that it's all about our faith. God wants us to, to, to have a faith. Right now, when, when David is feeling like this, when you're feeling like that. It is the most critical and important time of your life for you to continue praising God and to and continue being confident. Because what's the one thing that God is looking for in our life? There's one thing God's looking. He's looking for our faith. Yeah. He's wanting to see how we're going to do under pressure. He wants to see how we're going to respond to Him when He ignores us. He wants us to see how we are going to keep. Are we going to keep on believing Him? Are we going to quit when it doesn't seem like He is around? Are we going to stop praising Him just because sometimes we can't feel Him? Are we going to quit just because the rest of society has? Or, or is God is looking for faith and He is looking for men who just ain't going to quit on God? They ain't going to quit. They ain't going to lose their confidence in God. And they're not going to stop praising God. Let's look. First Peter, I get it turned over on myself. We read these verses. I just want to encourage you tonight. 
Don't let anything ever rob you of your confidence and don't let anything ever rob you of your praise. Just keep on believing God. Keep on trusting God. Keep trusting His mercy. When it looks like you're losing, you're actually going to win. What God is doing, what's God up to? And here's what God is doing in our lives. Whenever we are going through things like that, here's what God's doing. He is building the character of your faith. He's putting some character in your faith. He's making your faith real. What's God looking for? He's looking for faith. And you ain't see anything. It's easy to have confidence in God when everything's going great. Right. right. But <laughs> when things suddenly change, that's when it really matters. Oh, yeah. That's when it matters. That's when it matters the most. That's when you're a, that's when God is working the hardest in your life. When you can't see him and when you can't feel him, you can count on one thing. God is up to something good in your life. The Bible says that all things work together for good and the benefit of love. I don't know if he quote that exactly right. But God is up to something good in your life. When you, whenever he puts you in the dark, <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he just seems like he moves away from you instead of closer to you, he's up to something good in your life. What's he doing? He's putting, he's building character into your faith. You see, your faith has got to, God is looking for faith. And, he, he, and he's building that in our lives. He's putting that into our lives. First Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Let's just read it. Don't lose your confidence. Don't lose your praise. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Don't lose your confidence because your hope is alive. Our hope is in a, in a Savior that's risen from the dead. Isn't that right? Amen. If our hope is in a Savior that's risen from the dead and I am crucified with Him when He was on the cross, I was placed into Him and I died with him, I was fed with him, and I rose with him. My goodness, how can I ever lose my confidence knowing that my position in Christ will never change? That I'm in Christ in God. I'm in. I'm, I'm sealed until the day of redemption. Don't lose confidence. I don't care what happens. When I'm saying that because we don't know where America's headed. And we don't know if we may wake up in the morning and every penny that we got is worthless. You may have a bank full. You may, have a, you may have a ton of money in the bank, but in the morning, it may not mean a thing to anybody. But the one thing that this world cannot strip you of is your confidence and of your praise. And don't ever let that happen no matter what. Because they might strip us of all of our money, and they might take our land, and they might take our home, but they will never take our faith. And they will never take our confidence, and they will never take our praise. That's the two things that we have that nobody can rob us of. They can't get our salvation. That's of God. And we are sealed. And listen, we have a hope that is alive. My hope is alive. I don't care what I'm going through. I don't care if God even feel like God's forgot me. I don't care if I'm in the dark. All I need to know is that my hope is alive. Jesus is alive. To an inheritance. We have an inheritance. It's incorruptible. We have something over yonder that we'll never get right here. And listen, I've got, a, I've got an inheritance in glory where, where God is. And one day I'm going to inherit that place. I didn't earn it. I, I didn't deserve it. I'm just giving it. He's giving me heaven as a gift to me. Heaven is a gift to me from God. And uh, it's incredible, incorruptible, undefiled. That faith is not away, reserved in heaven for you. I've got, I've got, a, <laughs> I've got an inheritance reserved in heaven. I don't deserve it. I didn't work for it. I didn't earn it. Hey, I just inherited my father. My, oh, my, listen, my daddy. He went to Calvary so I could have it. He died for me so I could have it. I did not deserve it. I didn't work for it. I, it. I just inherited it. When, when Vicky's daddy died, he had land. He had houses. We used to inherit it. I didn't work for it. I didn't earn it. I didn't even do it. We just got it. Man, I, well, that's what happened. We don't deserve it. We didn't earn it. It's an inheritance. Verse 5, who are kept by the power of God. I'm not kept by anything but God's power. God's going to keep it. God takes care of me through faith. How's he do that? Through faith. <laughs> My confidence in God. I, I mean, we can't afford to lose our confidence under salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein we greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you be in heaviness through manifold temptations. My goodness, it seems like this darkness and this this uh, this thing that David was going through was maybe something that he needed. 
It need be. For it need be. There's a reason why that God is doing what He does in our life. I mean, there's a need for it in our life. We can't see it. We don't, we don't understand it. We don't like it. But we need it. You're in heaviness through temptations. Knowing that, that the trial of your faith being more precious than of gold, that perishes though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. There's a need for it. And what's God doing? In David's life, what's he doing in your life? What's he doing in my life? Well, he's building character into our faith. He's making our faith mean something. He's growing our faith. He's developing our faith. He's doing something for us that we can't do for ourselves. We can't develop our faith on our own. We can't, we can't grow our faith and, and develop our faith without trials. There's just no way. Our faith would just always remain small until we have more trials, until we have more temptations, and we have more troubles, and until we're in the dark sometimes, until uh, it's in the middle of the night and you can't see a thing, and there is God shows up right when you need Him because He's going to rescue you. And you can know that. We belong to God. We are God's people. You, you belong to God. He's going to take care of you. I promise you that. He's going to take care of you. And wherever I go, God's going to take care of me. I know that. He's going to take care of you. That's the one thing that I know that I can be confident in, that God is in control and He's going to take care of me. I don't have to worry about anything else. I don't care if temptations come. I don't care what kind of trials come. God's going to take care of me. I'm in the body of Christ. I belong to God. I've been purchased with the blood of Jesus. Ain't nobody ever going to snatch Him out of my hand. I can be confident. And that's not being arrogant. That's just being confident. That's just knowing who you are and saying, this is who I am in Christ and this is the way God sees me. And that's how I want to try to live out my life through the eyes of my Savior. I want to be what He says I am. Because in the end, I know He's going to rescue me. Look at verse 8. Who having not seen you love, and whom though you see Him not, yet believing. I can't see Him. You ever seen Him? I ain't seen Him. And rejoice with joy unspeakable for the Lord, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. You see, in the end, God's going to rescue you again. There it is again. In the very end, God's going to rescue us. And what's God doing? He, he's, he's building character in their faith. There was a man named Job. Think about him. He went through one of the same things that David did. I mean, the same, he went through the same kind of a storm that David did in a way, but his maybe to my mind it was a whole lot worse than that what David was going through. And Satan wanted to ruin his faith. That's what that's what he wanted to ruin his confidence. Job had great confidence in God. He had a great family. He had great wealth. He had he had, a, he had it all. He was a multi-millionaire, you might say. I mean, he had it all, and Satan couldn't touch him. And he was a and if you hear God describing, he was a man that that did not deserve to be punished. He was a man that was upright. He was a man that feared God and issued evil. And he lived right and he lived for God. And he, I mean, he didn't deserve to be punished, but Satan didn't come on. And, uh, and God told him, said, Have you considered my servant Job, an upright man, fears God, issues evil, holdeth fast his integrity, all thou, thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. He didn't deserve to be punished. Doesn't seem like in the scripture. Doesn't seem like he deserved anything of what he got, but he got it anyway. Why? You see, God's, God is going to develop our faith. He's looking for faith. And Satan says, and Satan comes and he said, skin for skin. <laughs> he said, skin for skin, Satan said. He said, if you will touch his flesh and his bone, he will curse you to your face. He says the only reason that he serves you is because you've just been so good to him and I can't get it, I can't touch him. I can't have anything to do with him. And he'll say he'll lose his confidence when I get over him. <laughs> That's what Satan told the Lord. He said he'll lose his confidence and I get a hold of him. And God turned him over to Satan only, he said, to preserve his life. And Satan smote him with balls from the head of his toe. He's sitting in ashes. But he's lost his wealth. And we know how all that happened. I'm going to spend all that time. He lost all of his wealth. He lost his family. He lost his family. He lost everything he had. Everything but his wife. 
Ain't that the way it goes? And she walks in and says, do you still retain your integrity? In other words, you still got your confidence? Where's your confidence now? Checking up on him. You know? He said, he said, curse, and she said, curse God and die. Go ahead and curse God and die. You're so confident in God, why don't you just curse him and die, you know? And Job said, shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all of this, Job did not sin with his lips. What happened? Job never did lose his confidence, did he? He's lost everything he's had. His family, his kids are all dead. All of his animals are done. His wealth is gone. He's sitting there in ashes. And his wife walks in and says, curse God and die. You know why she did that? She was feeling the same thing he was. She was going through the same thing he was. And she'd lost confidence maybe in some degree. I don't know. But but, but Job said, you, you talk like one of them unbelieving women who don't know what you're talking about. And then let's read over to Job chapter 19. Turn over there. We're going to read some of Job. And I'm just encouraging you tonight. Don't lose your confidence. If anybody ever had the reason to lose their confidence, Job did. I mean, I, I probably would have. You know, I, I, I'll just admit it. I probably would not have been like Job. And look how what he went through compares with what David went through. Listen to this. How long will you vex my soul? Ain't that what David asked? How long, oh Lord, are you going to let this keep going on in my life? But how long will you vex my soul and break me in pieces with words? I mean, he's not. This is his friends. He's talking to his friends, by the way. He's really talking to God. He's talking to his friends. His friends have attacked him ten times. <laughs> They've attacked him, and they're saying God is punishing him. And Job is declaring his innocence before me. He said, man, I ain't done anything. He says, how long will you vex my soul and break me in pieces with words? These ten times you have reproached me and you have ashamed. You are not ashamed that you made yourself strange to me. But, and be it indeed that I have erred, mine error remaineth with myself. If indeed you will magnify yourselves against me. In other words, they were thinking, man, we're better than you are, Job. Look, this ain't, we're not, we're not where you are. You must have done something really bad. And plead against my brother. Know now that God hath overthrown me and hath compassed me with his net. Here's what God's done. He says, Behold, I cry out wrong for violence, but I am not heard. I cry aloud, but there is no judgment. Where's God? Where's God in Job's life? He hath fenced up my way that I cannot pass, and he hath set darkness in my path. He has stripped me of my glory and taken the crown from my head. He has destroyed me on every side. I am gone in my hope. He has renewed and removed me like a tree. My hope's gone. He has kindled his wrath against me and he counted me as one of his enemies. God's treated me like one of his enemies. Look at verse 14. I'm going to skip some of it. He said, My kinfolk have failed and my familiar friends have forgotten me. <laughs> Son, He's going through all this and his friends is, 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 is making themselves strange to him. They're acting like they don't even know it. He called his servants, the ones that served him, and, and they wouldn't even answer. Look at verse 17. He said, my breath is strange to my wife. Look at verse 19. And all my inward friends adored me, abhorred me, and they whom I have loved have turned against me. Everybody has turned against him. He's lost everything. Yeah, I want you to see how bad the situation is for Job. He said, my bone cleaveth to my skin. And he's sitting there in boils. And I think what he had was leprosy. And leprosy starts out with boils from the top of your head to your toes. And that's how leprosy starts out. And I think that's what he's got. And he thinks he's scraping himself with him with whatever. And uh, he's in pain. He's agony. And in verse 23, here is what he says. I mean, I mean, you think, you, I lost my confidence right there. I mean, he's, everything's gone wrong. It can't go wrong in his life. It's, Satan has treated him like and done everything that he could because he, what's he trying to do? He's wanting to destroy his confidence. He's wanting to get rid of him. He's, he's wanting to stop Job from praising God. He said, skin for skin. If I get a hold of him, he'll curse you to your face because he'll do anything to save his life. But look what he says in verse 23. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were printed in book. Yeah, they are. They were graven with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives. 
Has he lost his confidence? No, I believe he has. And he shall stand in the latter day upon the earth. And though my skin worms destroy much body, yet my flesh shall I see God. Whom shall I see for myself? And mine eyes shall behold, and not another. Though my reins be consumed within me. But ye say, why persecute we him, seeing the root of the matter is found in me? Be ye afraid of the sword, for wrath to bringeth the punishments of the sword, that you men know there's a judgment. <laughs> he says, I know my day that redeemer liveth. And he says, I know there's a judgment. And he says, I know I'm innocent. And one day he says, God's going to make all things right. I believe he understood. I believe he understood. And he never lost his confidence in God. If anybody ever had a reason to lose confidence, it was him. He had a reason to live confident. And we must not lose our confidence. Because God is real. He loves you. And he longs to fulfill the desires of your heart. This is what I know about God. He longs to desire to fulfill the desires of my heart. I know that. And I know in the end he's going to rescue me. I, I, I'm, I'm confident that whatever God's doing, it's going to be okay. You know, with you, for me, uh, for all of us, I know. And I'm confident because a bit, my confidence is not in anybody. It's not in any man. It is in a God who always comes to our rescue. Always does. He always comes to our rescue. Consider those in Hebrews chapter 11. He said, Of whom the world is not worthy. And these all died, having not received the promise. They were sown and sundered. Uh, they were mocked with the cruel scourges. They were stoned. They were tempted. And the world was not worthy. But here's what they knew. And here's what they was confident of. That God having provided something better <laughs> for us. <laughs> you know that God had something better for them. And so they just went through whatever and they never lost their confidence and they never stopped praising God. And the most important thing that we can do in any crisis is to remain confident and to keep on praising God. Just keep on praising God. Will we remain confident? Or will we bend with the rest of society who's lost their confidence in God? This nation has lost confidence in God. Are we going to lose confidence in God because they do? Not me. When things suddenly change, just keep praising God. And then we read, and I want to say this in closing, people ain't going to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They ain't going to do it. They, they ain't going to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They, they know, they're not interested in the Bible, but here's what we'll think people will read, and they're going to read you. You're the book that people are going to read. They're going to look at you and they're going to see your faith. People, are going to, you're the book. You're you're that you're that disciple. You're the one they're looking at. You're the message. The Bible says that you're in a living epistle. They may not read the four gospels, but they're going to read your life. And what does your life say about God? Does your life say I am still confident and that, that I'm not going to stop praising? Second Corinthians three and two. Let's turn over there. That's my believe is. Last scripture. Second Corinthians 3 and 2. Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. We need to know, here's what we need to be confident about. That we know what he says about you, about who you are, and about your future. You can be confident about who God says you are. You know, people tell you who you are. They're glad to tell you what they think about you. But believe and know what God says about you. Then live that out in your life. Know what God says about you. What does God, who does God say you are? We know who men, what they say about Christians. We know what men 
say about people who believe God. They say you're weak. They say you've got a crutch. They say you can't prove it. They say it's, it's a fairy tale. That's what men say about your faith. That's what men say about you, that, that your faith is just a crutch, that it's not anything real. That's what people say. Don't lose your confidence because those people, are you're going to meet them every day. The people who don't believe what you believe and who know what you know. So the idea is for you not to lose your, lose your confidence. Don't you stop praising God, but begin to live out in your life who God says you are. God says you're strong. Well, be strong. That's what God says. You're strong, Jeremiah. Gary, you're strong. Sarah, you're strong. You're strong. Kathy, you're strong. You're strong. You got to believe that. That's what God says about you. You are strong. That you're mighty and power to the pulling down of stronghold. Let them start living it out. You're going to believe yourself. You're going to believe what man says about you. Or you're going to believe God. Here's what God says about his people. We need to start believing what God says about us. Who are you, Dickie? Who are you? You are strong. You are courageous. You are a conqueror. That's what you are. Now start doing that. And here's what God is wanting you to do. Go out and start doing that. Go out and conquer the sin in your life. Go do that. You can. You've got the power of God. You're kept by the power of God. You belong to God. You're not weak. You're strong. You're not who the world says you are. You are who God says you are. You can do everything that God says you can do. Be confident. And keep on praising Him no matter what. Because you are somebody. You are important. You do matter. And you can make a difference. And you will. Wherever you go. Whatever you do. Do it all in the name of the Lord. Be confident and be courageous. Don't be weak. Don't, don't quit now. Don't, don't back down. Don't back up. But move forward in your faith. Keep growing. Stay in the Word. Stay on your knees. And stay confident. Whatever God's got for you to do. It'll happen. God says, greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. Now you've got to start believing that. I have to start believing that. We can't, we can't move forward in our Christian life when we're scared to death. We can't, we can't operate in the fear. We must operate in our faith. We have to operate in our faith and we cannot conquer in our fear. And you're afraid. The lawnmower, it, it tore up on me and I, or, or I about turned it over. And I put a 60 pound weight on the front of that lawnmower. And I went up that bank without it. Two weeks ago, of course, I about turned over. It scared me to death. And I got to that same bank yesterday. I pulled up and I thought this thing got 60 pounds in it. And I succeeded where, where it turned right up and it still burnt. The grass was still burnt there where it had been running and for so long. And it went, I thought, I'm going to get my push mower back out. I could not rate my fear. I could not rate my fear. <laughs> I didn't use my faith. I, you know, I, I thought, man, it's going to take me 10 minutes to finish that little spot to push more. Am I crazy enough to risk my life to go up that hill one more time? I thought not today. Yeah, it pays out a little wisdom every now and then, too, you know. <laughs> you know, and don't be stupid. <laughs> but uh, you can't operate your fear. I couldn't go. I looked at that. I thought, I'm going up it anyway. I need to, you know. I thought, man, I just get to push more. <laughs> and I did. That's what I got when I got to push more. You know, we can't operate in our fear. The Bible says that you are kings and priests, that you are made to offer sacrifices unto God, that you are to offer your body a living sacrifice unto God. That's, that's who God says you are, that you are a living sacrifice. Start being that. Yeah. Start doing that. Start being that in your life. Be that living sacrifice. That's what God says you are. Who are you going to believe? And who is it you're going to follow? Are you going to follow this world? Are you going to follow your fear? Are you going to follow your faith? Are you going to follow God? Are you going to follow? Are you going to believe what God? You're going to, you got to be confident to be a living sacrifice. When you offer your body a living sacrifice to God, that means you've got to have some confidence to do that. You're not going to, you're not going to do that if you don't have faith. You're not going to do it. You've got to believe God. You've got to believe that if you do that, God's going to rescue you. If I give everything I have to God, I know he's going to rescue me in the end. I know in the end I'm going to win. And God says that you're soft. Go believe that. God says you're light. 
Go be light. Well, you know, I'm not be light. I'm not be salt. I'm not. You can't make a difference. You can shine. Go shine for God. He says you're light. Go shine. Go tell somebody about Jesus. God says you're forgiven. Well, go forgive your enemies. Go forgive somebody. Why are you hanging on to your unforgiveness? God says you're forgiven. Now, why don't you just go ahead and forgive everybody else's? But you're mad at Why don't you just forgive them? God says you're loved. Why don't you go love somebody? He loves you. If he can love you, you can love anybody else. I mean, you can love. If you're forgiven, you can forgive. If you receive forgiveness, and then don't give it. What does that say about you? That's stupid, ain't it? I mean, it don't fit, does it? For you to be forgiven and then for you not to forgive. And then for you to be loved and then you not to love. That don't fit the Christian life, does it? Which to love one another. Which to, he says you're rich. Don't live in poverty. Spiritually, I'm talking about. We're spiritually we set with him in heavenly places. And so we're rich. And listen, you're free. You're his. Act like it. You belong to God. Your, your, your father is a, in heaven. And your destiny is heaven. And he says you're free. Don't be a slave to sin. Don't be a slave to Satan. Don't be a slave to yourself. Don't never lose your confidence in any way. Because believe what God says about you. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to believe what God says about me. And listen, I'm just trying to do what God tells me today. So don't you ever do anything different other than what God tells you today. God ain't going to tell you to do something that he don't, uh, that ain't going to be best for you. So that's all I'm trying to do. Hey, I love you, everyone. I always will. Hey, and if they run me off over, I'm coming back, okay? <laughs> all right? I love you. Just, I mean, every time I go somewhere and I come, I always come back here. I always will, okay? I love you. I know you just love me. You're just what's put up with me like this. <laughs> Kathy, I know you love me. I know. I've done tried to get her a job over there, take care of the money over there, you know? She could do one, she could do two, right? <laughs> I'm just joking about that. You know better than that. But I love you. Don't lose your confidence. This is one thing I've always been about a sweet gun. Is you got confidence in God. I know you do. Now don't never lose that. If I show back up and you ain't got to, and you've lost your confidence and you've lost your praise, I'm gonna be mad, all right? I want you to pray for me that I don't lose my confidence and I don't lose my praise. You know, that's the one thing Satan wants to take away from his church right here. More than he wants to see less people here. He wants to take people's he wants to take people's confidence. And he wants to take their praise. And he wants to ruin that. And if he can ruin our confidence and ruin our praise, he can ruin the church. And he can ruin your life. But he can't touch you so I don't care what happens. In the end, you win. Receiving the end, your salvation. Your salvation. In the end, you win. Just remain confident. And just uh, keep on praising him. I have to come ahead of time. I'll let you close how you want to. That's my message to Sweet Gum Baptist Church tonight. And it'll probably be the first message I preach over that. We need people that's confident and we need people that are praising. And I'll let you. Let's go ahead and sing a lot of high All right, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said something.
light that shines in darkness now will safely lead me on. If it wasn't for that lighthouse, my shield would be no more. And I thank God for the lighthouse. Raging sea, the 
Well, I wonder what happened. I wonder who he is mad at. We know tonight Mike's not mad at anybody. We know tonight that Mike is being led by God to go somewhere else. We believe tonight that he's following the Lord. We believe it's the will of God. We're going to pray for Mike. Mike's our friend, not our enemy. We are going to continue to love and support and help Mike and work together for the better of the gospel. And that's the way it should be. But I see people all the time, they just leave churches and it leaves questions. It leaves, they say, well, who was they, man? What did they do? What's this? And it's just a mature, responsible thing to do yeah. if you leave a church. Amen. To leave on good terms. I'd hate to go join another church and may have a hard feeling to be mad at somewhere where I live. Some people's question, I've done things at Junaluska a certain way, and I've done things here, sir. These people come on to join here since I've been here. I've made them wait about six months. I mean, I just keep putting it off. But sometimes you just kind of think, you need to go make things right where you're leaving. Why are you leaving where you're leaving? I'm not, I'm not a church stealing pastor. I've had people, I've had two families come talk to me this week about coming to this church. And I said, if you feel like it's where you need to be and everything's good at your church, you're not leaving because you're mad or nothing. I said, that's great. I said, but you need to come and see if it's where you want to be. I said, now, I'm not going to steal somebody from nowhere. And I'm not going to try to do that. I've had people talk, and they couldn't believe that I didn't just beg them to come to church because I don't believe in stealing church members. I believe with all my heart sometimes it's time for people to move on. Sometimes people feel led to go to another church. Sometimes people are going to be used somewhere else. But I don't believe in trying to steal somebody else's church members to build your church. I don't think it works like that. I don't think it's a good thing. I really don't. That's where I stand. Mike, I honor you for what you've done tonight. My heart breaks because I know how torn we are. I've been there. It's hard. I know your heart, your life's here. Uh, you'll always be a part of this church. We love you. I don't know what else to say. I was going to get him a big cake, some ice cream, and have a big party. <laughs> but we had a little struggle on getting this worked out when he's going to be able to do this. And then I thought tonight, I thought, well, I sent out to message. I thought, well, there might be 50 people there, and there might be 15. I don't know. So I thought people probably ain't going to want to go back there and eat cake and ice cream. I would eat it. And then I'd have to eat it all by myself. Didn't talk about that. So I thought I better not do that. But Mike, we love you, and I want you to know this, you are party worthy. And if I got a, if I got you a cake, it's gonna say, Congratulations, Mike Tang, we love and miss you. So there it is. I hope you can visualize that. All right, let's see. <laughs> oh, praise God. Man, we're gonna miss him, I tell you. Many times I know on Sunday mornings he makes the difference in the service. I mean, he'll have a testimony or uh, he'll sing a song or he's just, Mike, he's outspoken. I mean, you need people like that in church. We ain't got many people like that that's just willing to just take the initiative to, hey, let's get this service going. We just ain't got many people like that. That's because he's leadership material. And I knew he wouldn't just be sitting here. So uh, I pray God bless him and use him. And uh, I don't know what else to say. We love him. We miss him. Amen. Anybody want to say anything tonight? It's like my friendship with you. Oh, it ain't my friend. No, that's right. Say <laughs> that lady's going to be across the hill. That's it. I'll come back over to the front side. Oh, hell, I definitely will. It's still good by. It's still good by. <laughs> we was looking at some old videos 30 years ago. More than that. Me and my Gina the house sing. I've been the same for 50 years. And y'all had light Anybody else tonight? 
says a lot out there about a man, you know, California from here, first thing he does is find a place to do abortion. You're going to survive and you better find a good church. I can't stand it. I was on vacation last week. I went to church last Wednesday night. I mean, I, I was asking people down there. I was asking them about church and they said, you're on vacation. I said, yeah, I still go to church. I said, I always try to find them I've been working. And, I mean, I made church. I don't know if I'm motivated to do I didn't preach. Some people say, well, he wouldn't go to church if he wasn't preaching. Yeah, I go to church. I went to little old church. I think there's nine people there. We had a good time. Children ate and had a great time. Pastor was really discouraged. I've been thinking about him a lot. He was, they'd really lost a lot of people through this coronavirus. Not dying, lost a lot of members. He was very discouraged. I heard somebody say the other day, it's easy to get up on Sunday morning and look at all the empty pews. He said, but uh, he said, you can't preach them people that ain't there, preach the ones that is. That's right. That works on it. Well, we'll get we'll let you go, I guess. We love you tonight. Nobody ain't got nothing to hurt. Be praying for the service Sunday morning. We'll come in here and have a good time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Be excited about it. See what God's going to do. I want to see more people saved. Amen. It's time they need to be getting saved. Mm -hmm. I promise you that. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be in your house tonight. We appreciate our dear brother, our friend, God. Lord, he's been so helpful to us in our ministry and our life, God. Lord, I've always prayed for me. God, I just thank you for my Lord. I love him. I love his family. God, I pray today, Lord, that you would bless him, God, as he goes to Steak Hall Baptist Church. I pray you'd bless the church. Yes. God, I pray your perfect will would be done right there. I pray you'd add to it as you see fit. God, I pray, Lord, that you'd give him the words, Lord, the passion of that flock. And Lord, that you'd give him the maturity and the wisdom. God, just fill him with your spirit. Lord, that he might lead them. God, I know, Lord, that we're running low on true men of God these days. Lord, I know my kids, true man of God. And I just pray, God, that you use him, Lord, God, in a mighty way. Lord, we